That's money. By now, we've all seen lots of videos on handheld laser welding on Instagram and other social media. It's fast. But how much faster is it than TIG welding? I got a demonstration at Denali Weld a few weeks ago on an 18-inch long piece of 16-gauge stainless steel, a lap joint. And I was blown away at how fast it was, how uh, free it was from discoloration, very little distortion. So I thought, well, that was a lot faster than TIG welding, no doubt, but how much faster? So I'm going to do a lap joint now, TIG weld it, but I'm going to use pulse settings and lay wire to try to speed it up a little bit. And so at the very least, if you're not interested in handheld laser, at least it's a video on TIG welding a lap joint using maybe a slightly different technique. I'm using pulse settings here. I'm using the rule of 33. So I set all the pulse settings to 33. 33 pulses a second, 33 background, 33 pulse width. Just as a quick side note here, when you're using pulse settings like this, you'll need roughly twice as much amperage as you would if you weren't using pulse settings. The reason I like to use at least 33 pulses a second is because it's not annoying to look at. It flutters, it agitates the puddle. That agitation seems to move the puddle along at a slightly lower heat. I'm leaving that 1 16th wire in the puddle, keeping in contact with the puddle all the while. You can see here I'm reading out 65 amps. That's because it's the average of the low pulse and the high pulse. This is not a bad way to weld a stainless 16 gauge lap joint. It's moving along pretty quick. Nowhere quick as that laser joint, but fairly quick. The benefit of editing videos, you can see exactly how long you went and how long it took. So this is six inches long, took 50 seconds. Let's take a look now at an 18 inch run on a lap joint, 063 stainless. Check this out. From what we've seen so far, we know this is going to be a good deal faster than TIG welding, but we're going to see just how much faster it is. I mean, this thing is moving along so fast, hardly any discoloration, which should go a long way in maintaining the corrosion resistance of stainless steels. It uses nitrogen for shielding gas, which I hear is mainly to protect the lens, not so much the weld, but obviously it's doing something to shield that weld. Like I said, this is an 18 inch long piece. You can see just a little bit of distortion there. 18 inches in less than 30 seconds, that equates to 36 inches a minute travel speed. That's way faster than I can TIG weld. Let's take a look at that weld from start to finish here. You can see just a little hint of purple and blue on the very end right there and then straw color and then almost no discoloration in the middle where it's conducting heat a little bit faster. I talked to a guy at a Fabtech years ago who was doing a lot of custom kitchen work, doing stainless countertops for high-end homes as well as restaurants, and he was really fighting distortion on those countertops. And I see this really coming into play there, being a huge benefit for somebody that's got the budget, obviously. I got to do a meet and greet at the Denali Weld laser booth at Fabtech. And so I got to talk to a lot of people who were already using handheld laser in production. One of which was doing parts for SpaceX on 50,000 circumferential parts, uh, 050,000 thick roughly. And then he said they were just knocking them out. They were just flying, great quality, very little distortion. Another guy I talked to was a business owner. He was doing some stainless steel ducting and vent hoods four, five, six foot runs on, on lap joints and fillet wells and whatnot. And uh, he said, so little distortion. He said, you know, it hasn't replaced TIG welding in his shop. TIG welding is just so versatile that it's, it will never be completely replaced. But certain applications like those long runs where you're fighting bucking and distortion, it's gonna make a lot of sense for a lot of production jobs. Hey, we're at the Denali Weld Laser Booth. They got live demonstrations of laser welding going on inside. This is their uh, enclosure with the safety switch on the door where the laser kicks off when you open the door. There was a line of people waiting to get a hands-on demonstration inside of this laser booth. This is one of the great things about attending Fabtech is if you're interested in a product, a piece of equipment, you can get a hands-on demonstration you can see it up close and personal and see the fit and finish of the product, talk to the product representatives, get a good feel for how the customer support's going to be. In the previous video, I showed welding a quarter inch thick piece of 5005 aluminum. This piece had a rough sheared edge on it, 
We didn't do any cleaning prior to welding. No wipe down with acetone, no filing, no grinding, no nothing. We just slapped it down against another piece and made a quick fillet weld on a lap joint. Reason I'm mentioning that is if you're TIG welding, taking a TIG welding test, you want to clean that rough sheared edge. That'll cause porosity every time, whether you're doing a fillet weld or butt weld or what. My experience is that is probably one of the number one culprits in failing a welding test on TIG welding, not cleaning a rough sheared edge. But this is going in like so quickly. This is the, this is the dual wire feeder with the 3000 unit. Doesn't take hardly any time at all. We used a few different settings here, but this was one of the settings that we used that had the pulse mode, or they call it scale mode on it, where it puts those ripples in there. That's a very small weld. Would be really difficult to do that with TIG welding, but did it penetrate, or did it just lay in there like a caulk bead? I compared that to a TIG weld, making the TIG weld as small as I dared while still trying to get penetration into the root of the joint. I was trying not to completely fill it up to the corner. It kind of wanted to, but I was trying not to. Then I cut it, polished it, and etched it so that we could all get a good feel for the difference in penetration in laser welding and TIG welding. After a good rinse there, I think we can see that the laser side, while it's got a really small leg size, it's got a pretty deep actual throat. The TIG side is kind of hard to tell the contrast unless I played the light just right, so I traced it with a, a little red thing on the computer so you could tell the difference. I think by bumping up the wire feed speed on the laser side, could fill that throat up a little bit better. All right, we're back on the 2000 machine now. We're going to do something called seam cleaning. So what is that? Seam cleaning, what it'll do is it'll remove any color from your stainless steel welds. It'll also clean up MIG welds, TIG welds on carbon steel. Um, also, you can use it to pre-clean your welds. So this is a piece of, uh, piece of stainless steel. We've got some pretty good discoloration. So we're going to see what the seam cleaning does on that. By using a different nozzle and different settings, defocusing the beam, I suppose you would call it, the laser is able to do this operation called seam cleaning, where it just removes the oxide layer. And like James said earlier, this could be used for a pre-cleaning prior to weld. That might be really useful on some carbon steel that had been sitting in the shop or maybe even outside for too long and got a light layer of rust on it. You could use the seam cleaning setting and set up to clean that rust off prior to welding. All right, now we're gonna do something called remote cleaning. I'm gonna let James tell us what that is. So for remote cleaning, unlike our other operations that are in this machine, you don't have to have contact with your workpiece. All I had to do was switch out to the remote cleaning head and switch the focusing lens to give it that focusing distance for the remote cleaning operation. And now we can remove any rust or mill scale off a steel plate. Now this was actually a lot of fun. I was talking to my friend JD at the Denali Weld laser booth at Fabtech and he was telling me he saw a truck in the parking lot of the hotel with a sign on it that said laser cleaning services. I'm quite sure this is being used for all kinds of things that I'm not aware of. You would want to have a respirator on if you're having to breathe whatever's coming off what you're cleaning though. It's not even hot. I just thought I'd share this clip right here again. It's just so cool to me. See that thing going along, laying down such a nice speed. Almost zero discoloration. Really, really little bit of distortion. I'm sure that companies that make food processing equipment out of sheet stainless steel like this, exhaust vent hood companies, companies that have the budget for it and fight with distortion, it's gonna be a huge deal. Well, that's a wrap. If you got questions on whether a handheld laser would fit your application, I'll put a link in the description. It'll fast track you to an applications person at Denali Weld. Get your questions answered.